This is Idiot with a Library Card, and today I'm going to be continuing my unofficial series of random installments from detective novels. Today I'm going to be talking about Troubled Blood by Robert Galbraith. And if you don't know, and funny enough, I didn't know until I was about a quarter way through this book, Robert Galbraith is a pseudonym for J.K. Rowling. I had no idea. I kind of picked up this book because the series was getting a lot of hype, and I was just curious about it. And halfway through, I was looking up some information on it, just, you know, curious about the author, and found out that it was, in fact, J.K. Rowling, which was pretty interesting. This is the fifth book in her Cormoran Strike novel series. The novels center around Cormoran Strike and his partner Robin. They solve cases because, you know, it's a detective novel. They run their own detective firm, and they have other operatives who work for them and are characters in the story. They have solved some major cases up until the point of the book I'm talking about, Troubled Blood. They have like a main investigation with the novel centers around, and then they have little offshoot investigations that actually have nothing to do with the main story, and it, it gives it a feeling of realism and I guess how it would be to run a private detective firm. Although I don't think you, as a regular private detective, solve as many murder cases, but still, it's fun. It's a detective novel, and it's just interesting that they have all these little side things going on. Cormoran is a war veteran who lost his leg in Iraq, and Robin is his partner in the firm. I believe in the first novel, and what I'm gathering from this novel and doing a little research, she comes on as like an assistant, but then gets into the job, and it turns out she's a pretty good investigator, so she ends up becoming a partner in the firm. And it's neat, because both are good at their jobs. It's cool that they have like complementary skills. And they complement each other during the investigation. If you're a fan of these books, I am guessing you'll find the summary I just gave of both characters a little brief and bare bones. But I just kind of want to set it up to just talk about the book overall. So in this installment, they are hired by a woman whose mother went missing in 1974. So it's a 40-year-old cold case. Strike and Robin hunt down witnesses, and notes from other detectives who first investigated this disappearance. It is assumed that a serial killer from that era had actually killed this missing woman. But it was never proven that he did it, and he's kind of a sociopath and won't say either way whether he did or didn't do it. They do a lot of investigating, and it goes really in-depth on the sources they use. There are all sorts of different items in the book that they use to investigate this murder. There are excerpts from books written about the serial killer. There are books that are written about the woman who went missing. Her name was Meredith Bambrall. Actually, Dr. Meredith Bramball. She was a general practitioner she disappears one night after work on her way to meet a friend. Like a lot of these books, there are a bunch of potential suspects, and Strike and Robin and the reader, of course, wade through a ton of information to try and break this cold case. This gets me to the major issue I have with this book. It's really long, especially for a mystery novel, but I would say it's pretty long for a, any type of novel. I would say that there are are some characters you could probably cut out. And the thing is, you don't need to tell an origin story about your detectives. You've already kind of established that in the earlier novels. And again, this is kind of why I like to come in in the middle of some of these series, because you skip some of that origin, how they came to be what they are stories, and you kind of just get into a straight-up mystery novel where the mystery take center stage. With just having a mystery to write about, it's amazing that this book is 944 pages long. 
And the thing is, there's a lot of great stuff in this book. It's well written. The central mystery is really well done and interesting. And even some of the side adventures and the other cases that they're working are pretty interesting too. They add a lot of flavor to the book. But like any novel, there are some lulls in the story. The problem is, with the length, there seems to be more dead ends and more boring parts than most other detective novels. And the thing is, when you hit a slow part or a not interesting part, you go, oh my god, I still have 600 pages left to read. The best example of this is at the end of the book. The mystery is solved on page 903. You still have 39 pages of decompression, and it really drags on. Personally, I was a little over the book. I was I was done with it. The mystery was solved. I was quite satisfied with the mystery and was ready to move on to the next book. And the end just drags on. And the problem is, it's not like the end drags on and you need some character development or it leads into the next adventure that they're going to have. It sort of drags on and nothing really happens. Now, I could certainly afford to lose 20 pounds, but this book could definitely afford to lose like 100 pages. Maybe you could even cut out more. It feels like it needed another edit, edit it down a little bit and and focus it a bit more. I don't want to make it sound like I hated the book. I liked it quite a bit, but the length is the biggest complaint I have about it. I will say in kind of a both plus and negative, I had to take it back to the library because I hadn't finished in the nine weeks I was allotted. And the fact that I didn't just return it and and give up on the book, which sometimes happens with long books that I get get to those nine weeks, I haven't finished the book, and I go, maybe I'll pick it up again sometime. I actually really wanted to finish it, so I brought it to the library. No one else had it reserved, so I checked it back out. And when I brought it back, I still had like 300 pages to go. So what I'm saying is it's a good book, but it was not the easiest to get through. And at times, I didn't think I really wanted to get through it. There were a few times, especially during the slower parts of the novel, that I had to take a few days away from it. And again, because of the length, this happens to me with books a lot, is I'll just hit a point with the book where I I need to put it down for a few days. This happened quite a bit with this book because there's so much in it that I would just get to a point where I would have to put it down for a few days. And this added to the long time it took me to complete and obviously the long time that this show is coming out since the last one. Now, we'll say the side stories are pretty compelling. Strike has two family issues going on. Uh, One of them is that his dad, who's a famous rock and roll singer... Uh, but wasn't around when he was a kid, is trying to reach out to him and, like, get more of a relationship with him. Actually, it's not, it's some of his stepbrothers and sisters that are reaching out to him to try to get a picture of all the kids for this dad, uh, who's a rock star and obviously slept with a lot of women, had a lot of illegitimate children. But Strike is the one holdout, and he refuses to see him. Because the father never really acknowledged Strike until he came back as like a war hero. And it was a whole thing. But that's that's a side story that's going on. And also Strike's aunt who who raised him and is kind of his like surrogate mother. She is dying. And at like the late middle of the book dies of cancer. Also, and I guess this is realistic. They have other cases. They go pretty in-depth as to what is going on in these cases. And you see a few get solved, and then they pick up new cases. So they're always kind of like at different areas in the other cases they're taking, which is interesting. And you do get a little drawn in and curious about what's going on with those other cases. There's also a will-they-won't-they kind of love story going on between Strike and Robin. And I would say This is another issue I have with the book, because if anything, it's just frustrating. And I think the most disappointing thing, as I said, the end of the book kind of drags on, is this is what you think is going to be resolved at the end of the book. It's not only not resolved, 
well, I should say it's not re- it's not only not resolved positively like they they do get together because that's kind of what you're rooting through throughout the book, but it doesn't even get resolved negatively. It sort of just it stays in that weird kind of will they won't they that it started in the beginning of the book. As I said, the mystery is cool and how it's solved is cool, and who did it is really interesting and great. But then those last 40 pages, you go, okay, fine, the mystery is solved. We're going to have to drag through a little relationship stuff with them to get that storyline resolved. And the last few chapters do show a growth in Strike's character. But even that is done in such a long-winded way. And it doesn't end with an anything like, yeah, they're together now, or maybe it's just not the right time. It sort of just ends with their relationship slightly more ambiguous than it was the beginning of the book the other issue i have with the book is there are a few chapters where see when i complain about something and it's kind of old man complaining it's grandpa bennett's gonna complain about something this is granny jk has a few parts where she needs to complain about the kids today or complain about men in general there's a scene where robin has a dinner party so that her flatmate can talk to Cameron because her her roommate is a her flatmate. Sorry, we're in London. Her flatmate is an actor who's playing a veteran and strikes a veteran. So he wants to talk to him. And it's one of those kind of comedy of errors or, you know, confluences of events that leads to a big blowout. And Robin's brother is going to see a concert in London and asks if he can stay at her flat for the night and he brings two friends one's a a woman and one's another guy and the scene's important to robin and strike's relationship because at the end of the scene they have a big fight because strike shows up drunk for for other reasons and this is one of the problems with the book is every time i try to get a little in depth it just pulls you into like more characters and getting more in depth it's like a peeling an onion you just have to keep peeling it And I don't want this show to be three hours long. But there's also social commentary, especially between what the college kids are talking about and the female friend of her brother and her view on like prostitution and pornography. It's done very ham-fistedly. And again, although the scene is important, it goes on way too long for what it's trying to accomplish. And I guess so far in the show, it sounds like I'm dumping on this book, and I really don't want to. Overall, it was a really fun read. It moved well enough, and there's a lot going on. It's why I can't and don't want to really get into the plot too much, because if I start pulling that thread, I feel like I'll have to explain so much. And again, it would be a series of show in this very unofficial series of shows. And I would just be doing this book for four episodes. And I kind of just want to talk about it briefly. I don't want to live my life on a JK Rowling mystery book. So the positives, both characters feel very real. There's a show on Netflix or BBC, but I think it's a BBC show that Netflix is now distributing in the United States. It seems like a pretty close adaptation of the novels. And I I think I'm going to check it out just based on how much I enjoyed this novel. The characters do have an arc. It's a good arc for a series like this. I think I'd like Robin's arc to be a little clearer and, and maybe bigger, like more change from the beginning of the novel to the end of the novel. I think Strike's arc is really good and and well done so if you're into mystery novels i would suggest checking out one of the six cameron strike novels i think the earlier ones would be a better choice to dip your toe in i do see an alarming trend with this series and i'm going to read six numbers and i think you'll see what i mean so it's 464 454 512 656 944, and 1024. That's the length of each book. So it seems like the series is starting to spin out of control. But again, it was a fun read for about 75% of it. 
And I would say both it's a good part and a problem is that the slow kind of tough parts to get through is about a quarter of the book. That slowness and and kind of boring and dead ending scenes are sprinkled throughout the book. It's not just like, oh, the beginning's not great, but once you get past that, everything's terrific or the ending drags, although the last 40 pages, as I said, do drag, but the general slowness kind of spreads out throughout. And since I'm talking in percentages, I would say 15% of the book in that 25% is slow stuff that is necessary to build the mystery. But there is like a 10% of the book that could be really cut out. And if you think about the length of the book, that's almost 100 pages that this average idiot with a library card had to slog through reading. So as I've been saying through most of this show, this seems like a series that's totally worth checking out. I just wouldn't recommend starting with the later novels. Probably the first three seem like a good place to start. I have a feeling that the newest installment, which is 80 pages longer than this current one, may suffer from the same problems this book did and is 80 pages longer. So Troubled Blood, a pretty good mystery novel just a little actually a lot of too long but the series seems pretty solid and again jk rowling is a very talented writer so it's probably worth a a check out if you're into mystery novels and it's something new which is cool because a lot of the great mystery novels are you know older so thanks for listening please like subscribe and comment wherever you get your podcasts and as i said in the beginning of the show The next show is going to be a random entry in a detective novel series as well. But that show is also going to take an in-depth look at a subgenre of the detective novel. So look for it when it comes out, because I think it's going to be one of my better shows.